Hollywood Radio Theater. We get many enjoyable moments out of the books we read, the sights we see, and above all, the things we hear. The Hollywood Radio Theater hopes to add to your enjoyment by bringing you each week the finest in dramatic and comedy entertainment featuring a stellar cast of movie personalities, many of whom will appear in their original motion picture roles. Now, here is our producer, Mr. William Peely. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Nice play, Take Care of My Little Girl. Now, to anyone who might think our story controversial... We assure you it's the exception and not the rule. Now, from the original cast of this 20th Century Fox screen success, our stars are lovely Jean Crane as the ideal pledge who finds romance with a G.I. student played by Dale Robertson, a newcomer to stardom and our stage. Now, Take Care of My Little Girl, starring Jean Crane as Liz Erickson and Dale Robertson as Joe Blake. To Elizabeth Erickson, this, without a doubt, is the most exciting journey in all her 18 years. She's on the train at last, the train that's taking her to Midwestern University. And to make it still more wonderful, at her side is her best friend, Janet Shaw. Oh, gosh, Liz. What'll happen when we get there? I mean, will we go straight to the campus? Well, not till tomorrow. Our first stop's the Murray Arms Hotel. Golly, I hope my trunk's arrived. <laughs> you should have heard Dad when he heard how much it's going to cost. That, that hotel, I mean. Oh, mine, too. Oh, but Mother convinced him. She said it makes such a good impression on the sororities if you stay at the Murray Arms during rushing. And after all, it'll only be for a week. Oh, then you'll be living at the Triu house. Upsilon, Upsilon, Upsilon. Well, so will you. Oh, if they take me, I will. You're a legacy, Liz. My mother didn't go to college. Oh, Janet, stop. Now, look, the house mother at Triu, her name's Mrs. Clark. Well, she and my mother were roommates, and mother's written to her about you. Well, I guess it's silly to worry so. But whatever happens, Liz, we'll stay together, won't we? You bet we'll stay together. Oh, Jan, I can't believe it. We're practically there. So once again, let me welcome you all to Midwestern. Now, if you'll just form lines, we'll proceed with the registrations. Good luck to you all. Thank you. Hmm. Liberal arts. Well, uh... Professor Blake, here, here's my, my card. <laughs> Thank you. And it's not Professor Blake. Oh. Not even Instructor Blake. I'm just a senior student. The authorities thought that because of my advanced age, I could help freshmen pick their courses. Oh. Oh, you, you were in the war. <laughs> Up to my neck. I see you haven't designated any science here. Must I? I'm not very good at science. It's required for freshmen. Now... What science would you like? Well, what science have you got? <laughs> well, we have some very nice chemistry today. Physics, zoology. Well, uh, uh, what about botany? Now, how do you like that? <laughs> well, I like it fine. The point is, how do you like it? Uh, this is somewhat outside my province. But just why did you come to college? <laughs> well, my father says I'm too young to get married and too old to hang around the house. Well, that's a better reason than most why did you pick Midwestern? My mother went to Midwestern. Oh? She was a tri you. Well, well, well. Hmm. Now, let's find you a real interesting major. Yes, Les. You know, this may surprise you, but I was awfully good at language. Frankly, it does surprise me. Oh. Well, you other girls, you better get in another line. I'm afraid this is going to take me a little while. <laughs> How do you do? I'm March Colby at the Triu House. Oh, oh, 
Oh, how do you do? We just wanted to say hello. How do you like your hotel? Is your room comfy? Oh, yes, it, it, it's just fine. We're dying to meet you, Liz. Of course, it's against the rules to issue any invitations before tomorrow, but we're expecting you for the opening tea. Will you be free at 3 o'clock? Oh, I, I'm sure I'll, I'll be free. Swell. The try you house then at 3 tomorrow. Oh, and uh, bring your friend. See you then, Liz. Oh, thank you. G- goodbye, Miss Colby. Thank you again. Well, try you, Jim. Three o'clock tomorrow. We're so glad you could come to our tea, Liz. Oh, thank you, Miss Colby. Oh, you just call me Marge. It's sort of a madhouse, isn't it? Oh, that's Jenny Barker there at the door. Senator Barker's daughter. Oh, of course, Senator Barker. And that's Helen Brown. She's head girl's cheerleader. That's quite an honor, you know. And the loud girl is Casey Krause. No use apologizing for her. There's one in every sorority. I think it's peachy about your mom and Mother Clark being so chummy. And speaking of Mother you Clark... You told her to tell me, Marjorie. I'd know her in a minute. Olive Erickson's Elizabeth. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Clark? Well, 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 well. I received a long, chatty letter from your mother just yesterday. She's very proud of you, my dear. I've heard about you as long as I can remember, Mrs. Clark. Oh, really? Your mother gave me very special instructions to take care of her little girl. Well, I... I just met your friend Janet. Such a sweet girl. I... I guess we're both a little excited, Mrs. Clark. Everything's so... so different and wonderful. And I want to hear all about it. Only first tell me about Mother. Well, do you know that 20 years ago she was there? Everything going all right, Mary? Yes, I think we can all take a bow, Mom. Like everything else, the Russian tea is just a matter of proper preparation. Who's that in the corner? Her name's Ruth Gates. A real squirrel. Just look at the sack she's wearing. Ruth Gates? Oh, ye gods, Marge, she's a legacy. I tried to talk to her before. She's just impossible. The Erickson girl, though, seems to be making quite a hit with Mother Clark. What about her friend, that Janet something or other? Average. Strictly average. I understand they're awfully close, Liz and Janet. Well, this could be a little tricky, Mary. Oh, relax. Oh, you know as well as I do that every girl here automatically will be rushed by every other sorority on campus. Bless them. We're still the best, and we'll still pick the ones we want. Oh, come on. Let's tell these kids what it means to be trying. Oh, Hello? Hello. This is Joe Blake. Oh, I thought you were my trunk. Not exactly. I helped you make out your schedule the other day. Remember? Oh, Professor Blake. No, not Professor. Not even... Never mind. How are you? Well, fine, except my roommate's waiting for me in the lobby. What's a big rush? Well, we're due at the Kappa Kappa Della house for dinner. I thought you were 100% try you. Oh, I am, but it's rush week. Kappa Kappa Delta, huh? Stringy leg of lamb, canned peas, two-toned ice cream, mints, and a demitasse. Where are you going tomorrow night? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, the fine news. Uh-huh. Stringy leg of lamb, two-toned ice cream, etc. Any bets? <laughs> Anyhow, curfew at sorority dinners is ten. How about me meeting you and buying you a Coke? Why? Is there anything wrong with my schedule? I think. This call isn't in the line of duty. It's on my own. It's a man. It's an older man. <laughs> Well, if you don't mind my wearing the same old suit I had on last time, my trunk's lost. I'll be wearing the same old suit you saw me in, and I never had a trunk. Well, <laughs> well okay, then. In front of the Kappa House at 10. Thank you, ma'am. Hi. 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 You lied to me. We had pineapple sherbet instead of two-toned ice cream. Those Kappas are getting more radical each year. What fraternity are you? None. Oh? You can break the date if you like. Don't you believe in fraternities? Well, to a 28-year-old who spent six years in the Army, the whole thing seems a little silly. But don't let me influence you. You're just the right age for all this nonsense. Oh, you haven't got a chance. I was brought up on Try You. Mother used to say, if you're a good little girl and do as I say, you'll be a Try You, too. 
I suppose you had the usual mother and daughter talk before you left. About try you? About men. <laughs> Why should we talk about men? <laughs> You're kidding. A pretty girl like you. Oh, don't worry about me. I can handle anybody. Grab my arm. Go on, just grab my arm. There's nobody going to grab your arm. Hmm. It is quite an arm at that. Now, let's get across the street and have that coat. Hello. We are ready on your call to Muncie. Go ahead, please. Hello? Hello, is that you, dear? Hi. Liz, there's nothing wrong, is there? Oh, Mother, my trunk. It still hasn't arrived. Oh, no. I'm desperate. Tomorrow night's the dinner at Try You, and you should see the looks the girls are giving me. The same suit, Mother, four times in a row. Well, there's only one thing to do, dear. You go right down to Simonson's and buy yourself the prettiest evening dress you can find. Dad's not going to like it. I'll worry about your father. <laughs> now, how's Janet? Do they like her? The triunes? Oh, I- I'm sure they do. Well, say hello. Oh, and give my love to Cookie Claude. I forgot to tell you in my letter. She's still a little heavy, Mother. Oh, much heavier than you are, dear. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> and if you need anything else, dear, to go with the dress, you know, like she. Well, I say this much for the try use. They serve the best dinner I've had since I got here. Well, I should think you'd be more interested in other things, Adelaide. For instance, Jan. Well, the, the girls. And that candlelight ceremony. Gosh, wasn't it impressive, Liz? Oh, it was beautiful. Well, I'm pooped. I can't wait till I hit the sack. But they're voting on us right now. I won't close my eyes all night. The minute my head hits that pillow, I'm gone. Hi. And Liz, look. What are you doing here? got a date with you. Well, thanks for telling me. But if you've got a date, Mr. Blake, it's with three girls. We came together and we're sticking together. A guy his age can't handle three of us. Come on, Janet. Oh, no. We we can have a lot of fun together. We can go... (laughs) I guess I didn't sound very convincing, did I? No, you didn't. Now you better come along quietly. No. Now let me try it again. Oh, no. The four of us can have a lot of fun together. I guess in the East, nobody ever says goodnight. Back in Tucson, well, listen, we... Listen, Adelaide, that's the old main bell. The one they sing the song about. Oh, imagine that bell's over a hundred years old. Right now, I'd give ten dollars to hear a coyote yell. Oh, you... All dreamy-eyed, huh? Just because a bunch of girls sang some songs and walked around holding candles. Well, it was beautiful, and nothing you can say is going to spoil this moment for me. Adelaide, there's a girl with the right attitude. She's taking all this hanky-panky right in stride. There are a lot of good things about sororities. For instance? Well, even with all the hanky-panky, a sorority is a big part of college life. And if a sorority wants you, especially a good one, it, it gives you a wonderful feeling of belonging. Oh, isn't it natural to want to belong? What about all the clubs, lodges, associations, brotherhoods, ladies auxiliaries? What about them? Oh, all right. So I'm silly. Besides, you you still may have the last laugh. What's that mean? The try use. Right now they're deciding who they're going to pledge. Golly, just because they've been nice to me doesn't mean they're going to... Not a chance, Liz. Not a chance. You're in. How can you be so sure? Well, I'm not just an old man. I'm a wise old man. I'll tell you all about it over that cup of coffee. All right, girls, we're supposed to be voting. Now, what about Adelaide Swanson? Is she in or out? Tucson, Arizona, horses and tennis. Well, she'd be a breath of fresh air around here. She doesn't seem to be a sorority type somehow. Uh, uh, may I say a word or two? Mother Clark, of course. Well, we've had a note from an alumna in Adelaide's hometown. Adelaide's mother operates a million dollars worth of ranching property. She thinks Adelaide would have much to offer. Well, to be perfectly honest, there's so little you can really tell about girls during rushing. Depends from where I'm sitting. 
Well, does anyone want a black ball, Adelaide Swanson? No. no. Uh-uh. All right, we have four more to go. Now, sit tight, sisters. Ruth Gates. Oh, oh, no. oh no, no, girl, please. You, you know how I hate to interfere, but Ruth's a legacy... Her mother was a dear, sweet girl and a fine example of try you. Casey was a legacy, too. We took her in, and look what happened. Thank you, Dallas Pruitt. Well, I'd like you to know the sorority's gotten rich on my 50-cent fine. Now, what are we wasting time for? Ruth Gates is absolutely hopeless. Now, just a second. I agree that Ruth Gates is a sad sack, but, well, she's probably been brushed off ever since she was a kid. That's not our problem, Casey. But we can do things for this girl. Isn't that what sororities are for? Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, I think Casey has a point. At least we ought to discuss it. Actually, girls, the pledging period is really just a, well, just a trial period. It, it would please me very much. All right. I won't stand in the way of a girl being pledged. But let's get one thing straight. Unless Ruth changes, and I don't believe in miracles, I'm never going to allow her to become initiated. Well, that's fair enough. Thank you, dear. Well, I guess we've pledged Ruth Gates. Now, here's one legacy we're not going to fight about. I guess we're all pretty unanimous about Liz Erickson. Mm -hmm. Count me in. She's creamy. Me too. She's terrific. Well, I guess we're all sold on Liz. And now about Janet Shaw. Liz and Janet, well, they're just never apart. Maybe Liz won't take our bid unless we take Janet, too. How many have we decided to ask? Thirteen. Well, that leaves room for only two more. We've got to be careful from now on. I know two other girls who are simply must. They come before Janet with me. Now, where's the harm if we take 16 girls instead of 15? Every other sorority on the campus. We're they not commit. every other sorority. We're try you. Anyhow, how much do we know about Janet's family and her background? We can't afford to... Now, do... let's not get on the subject of families and backgrounds. What about our own dear Mrs. Richards? Didn't she nearly go to jail? Oh, oh no, Casey. Casey Krause, how dare you? That's enough out of you, Casey. You're fined 50 cents. Oh, now, listen, oh, nobody's going to shut me up when it comes to a question of family. Adelaide, look, my pledge card. Try you. They want me. Yeah, me too. Say, what do I do about this? What do you do? Well, you're accepting, of course. Oh, no, I'm not. Adelaide! Oh, it's too much social stuff. Too many phony smiles and all that singing. But it's not all just singing. <laughs> what about the girls? What about the beautiful friendships you're making? Oh, what's them? the matter with the girls in the dormitory? Can't I make friends with them? Without all that singing? <laughs> Janet! Oh, honey, where have you been? Oh, Oh, just around. How did you do? Two bits. No, Liz, not try you. Oh, sometimes there's, there's a mistake. If you go back... There's no mistake. I've been back. Well, did you get five pies? Yeah, Delta Mu. Well, so did I. Then all we have to do is to decide between them. They're both just as good as try you. Well, I'm going to Hyler Hall, and if you two had any sense, you'd come with me. Oh, Adelaide. Janet, darling, what do you think? Personally, I say Delta Mu. You know very well that Delta Mu isn't near as good as Try You. It's, it's a goon sorority. Oh, it's not so bad. Besides, we, we made an agreement. Oh, a kid's agreement. We didn't mean it. I meant every word. Wherever we go, we're going to go together. <laughs> Please, stop it. I, I can't stand anymore. I've got an 11 o'clock class. Oh, Janet, don't be crazy. Let me go. Hello? Who? Just a second. For you, Liz, the express agency. Your trunk's here. Hello? Oh, well, can you send it right up here to the hotel? Oh, oh, no. No. Just a, just a minute, please. Oh, Ed, what should I do? About Janet? I'm afraid you're on your own, kid. <sighs> Hello? I I guess you'd better send the trunk to the Try You house. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> We'll return.
return in a few moments with Act Two of Take Care of My Little Girl. The time has passed when the boys and girls of the United States never travel over 50 miles from their birthplace. In hundreds of locations around the world today, you young men and women in uniform are serving the United States. Your country depends upon you in many ways. First, there's your military job to perform. That's carefully defined. It's detailed so that you know exactly what to do. But there's another way in which you serve your country that's a little more difficult to outline. It involves your daily contacts with people of other nations. To them, you're an example of the American way of life. You're a citizen of a foreign country. Your actions will be interpreted by them as the typical actions of an American citizen. For that reason, you must be conscious of your duty to help promote better understanding between nations. Be a good example of our way of doing things. Remember, a country is known by its people. What people think about your country depends upon you. Now, Mr. William Keeley, our producer. Act two of Take Care of My Little Girl, starring Jean Crane as Liz and Dale Robertson as Joe. later, and Liz has been duly pledged to the most exclusive sorority at Midwestern University. Classes are over for the day, and Liz has promised to meet Adelaide across the campus in the jug room. Hi, Liz. Sit down. I ran into a friend of yours. Have a cup of coffee. What are you two so glum about? And where's Janet? We just come from seeing Janet off. She's gone home. Gone home? But but why? There are always a lot of casualties pledge week. But she... What? Oh, this is awful. I, I feel so awful. You and I are going to take a little walk. You mind, Adelaide? Go on. Go ahead. I knew I'd get stuck with a check anyway. You can afford it. Come on, Liz. All right, Liz. You've cried enough now. It isn't the end of the world. Oh, I did this to Janet. We, we promised each other. We made an agreement we'd never be separated. Now, wait a minute. You're building this up way out of proportion. No, no, I'm not. Janet's life is ruined, and, and I'm you, responsible. You listen to me. <laughs> Janet's an idiot to let a bunch of silly girls drive her home. In six months, she'll see how ridiculous it all was, and she'll come back here. Go somewhere else. She'd be a much more sensible, a much happier girl. Well, I still have the feeling I'm pretty awful. No, you're not. You're just not very bright, that's all. <laughs> and if I look anything like the way I feel... You look fine. Yeah, I bet you're just crazy about my red nose. It tilts a little too much. Outside of that, I find nothing to criticize. Now, let's get back to the jug room. I've got to eat. I got a job tonight. It'll be free Saturday night. Oh, well, Saturday night's the dinner dance. Oh, yeah. So it is. The cream of the crop. The ladies from Try You and the gentlemen of the Lambda House. Who's your date? Oh, no one special. Everyone just goes over and meets them. It gives the pledges a chance. It sounds to... swell. Well, I intend to have a very good time. Yeah. Yeah, you do that, Liz. No matter what happens, you have a good time. <laughs> Casey, who is she? What's your name? Do I have to? Very funny. Well, brace yourself, Liz. This is Chad Carr. Mr. Carr's Miss Eric. <laughs> well, hi. Hi. Big romantic interest to the campus. He skips dinner, then shows up clobbered. It's part of his charm. Liz, huh? Well. You see that door? Uh-huh. What's that? Okay, we're in the clear now. What are we doing in the kitchen? It's my wine cellar. Uh, just hand me a couple of those glasses, will you? Uh, just a, a little for me. That's all you're going to get. This stuff's expensive. Is that why you're looking so grim? 
No, no, I, I got stood up tonight. Oh, that's pretty awful, huh? Well, I got a reputation. If the news got out, it'd kill my roommate. <laughs> well, at least you can laugh about it. Who's laughing? What am I doing telling the truth to you? There's something about me. I don't know. People just can't lie to me. Maybe I'm different. So I want you to change. I want you to be like the other tri Act like Mary, talk like Marge, dress like Dallas. Then I'll be able to lie to you with the greatest of ease. Who you been dating? Joe Blake. Do you know him? Yeah, I know him. What's the matter? Something wrong with him? No. Nothing wrong with him, and I don't like him. You'll have to be a little clearer than that. Joe Blake is a quiet, superior heir. Well, he, he is superior. Well, he might be a little noisier about it, so we'd have something on him. I'll bet he hasn't told you a thing about his war record. No, just that he was in it. That's what I mean. Two silver stars, he never says a word about it. That I can't stand. Come on, I'll, uh, I'll turn you over to the mob. And you? I am going out again. I got to find out why I was stood up. It's been a real pleasure, Miss Erickson. Well, thank you, Mr. Carnes. Happy landing. All right, girls, you can all take ten minutes. Oh, well, now, I don't think I'm getting soft. The midterm exams start in just three days, and in this sorority, we have certain definite rules about study hours. Six hours daily for every pledge. Ruth, didn't you hear me? I said you can stop for ten minutes. Oh, oh, excuse me, Marge. Oh, that girl's impossible. Liz, do you have a minute, please? We'll be sending out the invitations tomorrow, Liz, for our midterm dance. Maybe you can explain this to me. I guess it doesn't make much sense, Marge. You put Joe Blake's name down on the date list, and then you cross him out and put down Chad Kern. Oh, I know. And I cross Chad out, too. Well, who's it going to be for heaven's sake? You can't be serious about Joe. Sure, sure, it is Joe. Well, I, I've known him longer than Chad. A big-time operator like Chad Carnes chases you all over the campus, and you prefer Joe. I don't mean to butt in, Liz, but all the other men will be from fraternity. Mary's right. Joe wouldn't feel at home. He'd be uncomfortable. Now, Chad, on the other hand... Oh, I know he's fun, and I, I love dating him, but... Oh, I don't know. By the way, does Joe own a dinner jacket? <laughs> I just bet he doesn't. Anyhow, he can rent one, can't he? Well, that's all the Five Pies have to hear, a rented suit. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for making up my mind for me. Just send my invitation to Joe Blake, please. It's up to you, Liz. I guess you know what you're doing. For you, Liz. Telephone. Oh, thanks, Dallas. If it's Adelaide, tell her... It happens to be Chad gone. Chad? But he's supposed to be in the middle of a French exam. Well, he spoke to me in faultless English. Thanks, Dallas. Chad, where are you? In the jug room. But your exam, don't tell me you've finished it already. Liz, I gotta see you now. You gotta believe me, it's very important. Well, all right, Chad. I'll, I'll be right over. Chad, what's it all about? The exam. I, I took one look at the questions and I knew I was dead. Well, how long could I just sit there staring at the ceiling? But what did you do? I handed in my blue book practically after you and came down here. And then, then I got the idea. What idea? Well, didn't you tell me you were a prize student in French? Well, I'm no prize winner, look, but I... Look, here's a copy of the questions. I, I bought another blue book. I thought if we could go someplace, you could fill in the answers for me. Still have plenty of time before the exam's officially through. What good would that do? You've already handed in your blue book. Sure, but when the exam's over, the prof will take the blue books to his office. Oh, gee, Chad, it, it sounds awfully risky. So I'm thrown out of school a few days earlier. Yeah, but what a way to go. Well, what's the matter, Liz? Scruples? No, not exactly. Oh, look, Liz, everybody cheats. You know that. Except maybe a few spooks. I'll admit it certainly takes guts. Chad, I... I can't. Okay. No, oh, I know I've been flip about flunking out, but I... Liz, believe me, it's the most important thing in the world to me right now. He said I'd never make it. Not in a million years, he said. I gotta show it. Who? Oh, my father. All my life he's been writing. He calls me his remittance man. And he laughs. 
All he does is laugh. How, how will your mother take it? My mother or my father's wife? You mean they're not one and the same? No, it's my father's third. Oh. Well, where, where is your mother? I guess she's still in Pasadena. Look, Liz, if, if I flunk out now, I, I, I just couldn't go home and face my father. I just couldn't. Chad. Oh, I know. I must sound like a grade-A crybaby to you. Forget it. So I don't graduate. Lots of people never went to college. No. No, you've got to graduate. I'll do it, Chad. Now, where can we go? There he is, Liz. That's Professor Benson. He's got the blue books under his arm. At his office down there? Yes. Now, Liz, as I'll say it again, you got to still back out. No, let's go, Chad. Let's get it over with. Hey, you got through your exam pretty early, didn't you? Yeah, shows what a little bowling can do, Professor. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, may I present Miss Erickson, Professor Benson? How do you do? How do you do? Uh, uh, Miss Erickson's going to France this summer, sir, and, uh, well, I... I told her you could be a big help to her. Oh, you see, she doesn't want to see the usual tourist stuff. Well, I can't say I blame you, Miss Erickson. Well, I've heard so much about Brittany, Professor, but I haven't the faintest idea where it is. Well, first of all, suppose we take a look at the map back here. Brittany's on the coast, you see, and it's... Well, uh, thanks again, Professor. That's all right, guns. I just hope I was able to help you, Miss Erickson. I did it. I did it. It worked. He showed you the map of France, and I switched blue books. All of a sudden, I, I, I can't stop trembling. I'm going to see to it that everybody at the Lambda House knows what you've done for me. I'll, I'll never forget this, Liz. <laughs> I don't care what you think. I say what Liz did for Chad will really launch her. Oh, you're talking like a child, Alice. It was plain, ordinary cheating, and I don't like it. Don't mind Mary Liz. She has to make a noise like the chapter president. <laughs> She's a hero over at the Lambda House. Do you know what one of them said? You well, he said Liz has the look, the right sorority connections... And when the grapevine gets going on this little episode, she's a cinch for queen of the frosh frolic. Queen of the frosh frolic? Golly, what did I do? I'll tell you what you did. A little thing like this will bring attention to you, and that means votes. And that should show you the difference between men. Why, well, I can just picture Joe Blake having enough nerve to do a thing like this. It didn't require nerve, just a lack of character. Oh, ye God, Mary, we haven't had a frosh queen since 44. Yes, right. <laughs> Thanks for walking me home, Joe. Thanks for the true confession. Okay if we sit on the porch for a minute? Sure, I guess so. Of course, what just bowls me over is that Marge and Dallas act as if I just swam the English Channel or something. Well, you see, some people, cheating's a major sport. Well, you've just earned your letter. Oh? Well, I don't know if I'm crazy about your attitude. Sorry, Liz. It's the only attitude I have. You know me, one suit, one attitude. Well, you needn't be so smug. We're not the only ones to go in for cheating. Look, I know sororities haven't got a monopoly. Maybe I'd like to cheat, too, but I'm a pre-med. I'd only be cheating myself. You think I'm pretty much of a heel, don't you? I didn't say that. To think of the way I've been defending you. <laughs> what? Why, they've been hogging me for weeks, and I, I've been standing up for you. I'm beginning to think that Marge and all the others are right. You're just a smug, stuffy... Now, wait a minute. Just because your conscience is bothering you? Take it out on me. Here, I was feeling so excited and happy, and you have to come along, and why, why you're the most... Why, you haven't even got a dinner jacket. Whoop. I guess that just about sums me up. I haven't even got a dinner jacket. Liz, is that you down there? Hello. Chad Carnes is on the phone. Can you come? Yeah, you better go. You better not keep raffles waiting. Why, why, you... Liz. Relax, Ruth. She's on her way up. Uh, 
Thanks for dinner, Chad. It, it was wonderful. Uh, let's let's sit in the car for a minute. I, I want to say thank you again. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. I'd never do it again. My life of crime is over. You know, my only regret is that I waited until my senior year to dream up this little system. Think of all the years I wasted studying. Oh, Chad. All that time we were in Professor Benson's office. Weren't you frightened? Oh, here I go telling you the truth again. Yes, I was frightened. You didn't show it one bit. Oh, I was afraid for you, too. I, I've got to go in. I'm supposed to be boning on math. I want to take a certified public accountant to concentrate on math on a night like this. Liz. Liz, I, I want to kiss you. How do you say once again in French? Encore, s'il vous plaît. Oh, Chad, maybe it's not us. Maybe it's just the excitement. No, of what... no, no, no. This should have happened long ago, Liz. I. I want you to have my pen, Liz. You know, some girls say that getting a boy's pen doesn't mean a thing. Others think it means you're engaged or something. Well, I. I guess it means you're engaged to be engaged. It, it means that someday, if you pass math and don't put on weight, I might ask you to be my first wife. It's like my father would be flattered if I followed his pattern. <laughs> oh, now, come on, look, it's not that funny. No, I was just thinking how happy this is going to make Marge. Good night, Chad. Good night, baby. Well, I didn't know Chad and I had an audience. Sorry, Liz. I guess I should have just sneaked away. What do you want? Does it matter now? No. No, I guess it doesn't. That's what I figured. So long, Liz. Have fun. for station identification. The curtain rises on Act Three of Take Care of My Little Girl, starring Jean Crane as Liz and Dale Robertson as Joe. For the past few days, Sorority Row at Midwestern University has become Nightmare Alley. For this is Hell Week, the traditional week when freshmen become the world's lowliest creatures. Liz Erickson is no exception. Her particular job at the moment is walking around the block, tracing each footstep on the sidewalk with a piece of chalk. Liz, this is awful. Oh, hello, Ruth. Around the whole darn block. My back will be broken. I've got to go to the graveyard and copy the names off a hundred tombstones. <laughs> Ruthie, wait a minute. Honey, I don't think you'd better go. But we've got to do what they tell us, and now especially. Oh, Liz, as soon as this is over, we'll be try yous. I don't like the way you look, Ruth. I'll bet you've got a fever. Oh, I'm just tired and excited. Oh, I saw Joe Blake today. He asked about you. Oh, did he? Oh, he's so nice, Liz. Oh, I wish I were just half as popular as you are. First Joe and then Chad Carnes and... Oh, Liz, thanks for being so nice to me. Will you quit being a mouse? You're a wonderful girl, Ruthie. And honey, stop apologizing for being alive. But you wouldn't understand. You wouldn't know what, what all this means to me. Well, it won't mean a thing, honey, unless you get on the job. Oh, my gosh, the graveyard. I'll see you in the night. Hello, Liz. As the last piece of business, our grand pledge mistress will now tell us what she's planned for the pledges tonight. Well, let's start with our prize package, Ruthie Gates. 
She's to go to every house from 4th to 11th Street and get the name of every occupant. <laughs> well, I don't think it's fair. Well, what's the matter with you, Dallas? I know we don't vote on the pledges until Friday, but you all know what my attitude was when we pledged Ruth and... Well, that miracle hasn't happened. She's still the same squirrel. Well, I think she's improved 100%. And where does that put her? I defy even Casey to say that Ruth is good enough to be a try you. Well, she is, too. There's nothing wrong with her. Oh, come now. How many of you really want Ruth for a sorority sister? Go on. Raise your hands. There you are. Less than half. And it only takes one black ball. How can you be so cruel? Don't you know that Ruth is ever more ho- cruel to let Ruth go through three more days of hell week agony and torture? I say let's do the decent thing and tell her tonight. Well, I'm glad I won't have to tell her. No, none of you will have to tell her. It's all up to little me, isn't it? All right, Marge, get on with the rest of the list. Yeah, Come on in. Lowly Ruth Gates reporting exalted one. Well, let's forget that nonsense, shall we? Have some tea, dear. Oh, no, thanks, Mary, but I've got to rush off on my next assignment. Ruthie, have you been happy here? I mean, really happy with us. I've never been so happy in my life. What I mean is, well, there have been cases, you know, of pledges feeling they were in the wrong group. Mary, I want to be a try you more than anything else in the world. I'm afraid I have some bad news, Ruthie. I understand you've run up some pretty big bills at Simonson. Well, just for clothes, Mary. I, I wanted to have the right clothes. They've reported it to the Dean of Women. Well, under the circumstances. Well, we have such finicky bylaws. But, and all... Mary, I'll pay them. They said I could oh, wait Oh, it's till... not just that, Ruth. Well, I, I wish there was something I could do, but my hands are tied. I, I've i got to go to 4th Street, Mary. Get names. No, dear. You don't have to do that now. Oh, you look so tired, Ruth. Why don't you run along to bed? Oh, and there's absolutely no rush about moving out. Is, is that all, Mary? Yes, dear. That's all. Liz? What's the matter with you? Lost or something? Joe! Oh, hello. So what are you doing up so late? Hell Week stuff? Yes, a little job to do. I haven't seen you since... When was it? The middle of December? First week in December. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I did catch a glimpse of you the other day, but I was wearing a ridiculous 1890 bathing suit, and I didn't want yes, to... Yes, the parasol. You saw me? And I saw you see me. Well, thanks for not letting me see that you saw me see you. <laughs> Gee, I'm glad to see you, Joe. Honest. That Chad pen you're wearing? Uh-huh. Well, a little belated, but my insincerest congratulations. My... My insincerest thing. So much for Chad. Now, what's your target for tonight? Well, I've got to get to Cloverdale, and they made sure the buses aren't running, and get this postcard signed by the head nurse at the hospital, and then somehow get back here. And that's all I have to do. Well, you can get out of doing that, you know. How? Walk me down the street. I'm due at a party at Jack Gruber's place. You know him? No. But tell me, how do I get out of going to Cloverdale? You can hand in your pen. Oh, Joe. Or sign the nurse's name yourself, then you can go to the party with me. Not the top-notch people, of course, but there'd be music and something to eat. How about it, Liz? Oh, I can't, Joe. I really can't. Well, that's too bad. This is where Jack lives. No, no. Downstairs. Basement apartment. Uh, look at him. He sure looks cozy and warm in there. Why, there's Casey and Adelaide. That's right. Gosh, I haven't seen Adelaide for ages. Yeah, that's the way it goes. You don't always mean to lose track of friends. Maybe if I went in for it for just a few minutes. Good. Good. Let's go. Ah, 
What is this, Liz? Desertion? Hello, Casey. It's part of Hell Week they're forcing her to mix with non-fraternity folks. You won't give me away, will you, Casey? Give you away? My girl, I'm proud of you. Well, she's still at the wrong water hole. Adelaide, honestly, I've been meaning to come over and see you. Honey, the road to Hyler Hall is paved with good intentions. I'm awful glad to see you, Liz. Liz, look, the doorway. Well, isn't this just dandy? Chad Carnes. Sorry to barge in, but can anyone tell me if Liz Erickson's here? Well, Chad, what, what are you doing here? Get your coat, Liz, let's go. Wait a minute. How did you know I was here? One of our pledges saw you. How will you get your coat? Say, that's quite a spy system you have. Did the girls give you an assignment for the night? Oh, uh, honey. Have you done it? No. Why not? Because I told her not to. Lizzie, you're crazy. Three days before initiation. You've got to marry Tully, you're sorry. Yes, and then I might try going to Professor Benson and telling him I'm sorry. What's but that I... got to do with it? If you haven't got guts enough to go through Hell Week just because it's tough, if you haven't got the integrity Integrity? To... Maybe I'm no one to talk after helping you teach, but you're just the fellow to preach integrity. Just a minute, Liz. You have to try to understand Chad's sense of values. Look, you, don't think I'm scared just because I'm surrounded by your friends. Oh, shut up, Chad. Shut up. You're acting like a child. Come on, Liz. Maybe we'd better... Take your hand off. Now, that's enough of that. Everybody's acting like kids. You coming with me? No. No, I'm not. Okay. Stay. You seem very much at home. Well, at last I've got something to tell my children. I saw Chad Carnes get a smack in the nose. Sorry, Liz. Gosh, I, I'm overdressed. What's that mean? It means, what do I do with a fraternity pin I, I don't want to wear anymore? Come in. Oh, lowly Elizabeth Erickson. Oh, never mind that, Liz. Chad just phoned. He said to tell you he was sorry for behaving like a louse. What's it all about, Liz? Oh, nothing, Mary. While you were out, you didn't happen to run into Ruth Gates, did you? No, but she had a long assignment. Yes, I, I know. Wait, you're worried about her, aren't you? Oh, I knew she wasn't feeling well. Liz, we had a meeting tonight. I... I had to tell Ruth she was be pledged. Be pledged? Oh, but for why? There's no point in discussing that. Now we've got to find her. Liz, where are you going? Like you said, Mary, we've got to find her. Well, what next, Liz? We've been to the railroad station, the airport, the bus depot... Searched all over town. I've got to find her, Joe. What was Ruth's assignment tonight, do you know? Oh, some silly thing. The names of everybody living between 4th and 11th Street. Oh, but Mary told her not to go. Yeah, well, I've got a crazy idea. Come on, we'll go over to 4th Street. Well, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. There's just no sign of her, Joe. I told you she wouldn't. Wait a minute. There, across the street. Isn't that someone on the step? Ruth! Ruthie! Come on. But she, she's just sitting there. Ruthie! I just finished finish getting the name. Oh, Ruthie, what's the matter? Honey, look at me. Maybe if I get the name, maybe they'll let me... Liz. Liz, they've done it. They've depleted me, Liz. <laughs> Give me a hand. We've got to get to the infirmary right away. Oh, I came straight to the hospital as soon as you phoned, Liz. How is she? They're taking x-rays, Mother Clark. Oh, this is just awful. That poor girl. Where's the doctor? Across the hall. Dallas. You and Mary stay here. Oh, what a strange girl that Ruth is. Mary was so nice to her. She begged her to go to bed. Then she slips all Mary, I don't understand. Three days before initiation. Why did you do pleasure? How could you do a thing like that? I'll wait outside, Liz. Oh, if you could have seen her face. 
I know you don't like her, Dallas, but Ruth was so happy at the house. She tried so hard. Now, really, Liz, you're still a pledge. We can't discuss these things with you. We had no choice, Liz. Ruth's run up some big bills she can't pay. That reflects seriously on the house. But I'm in the same fix. I've been running up bills, too. I hate to be saying this with Ruthie so sick inside, but there's a big difference between you and Ruth. Oh, I see. You have one set of rules for the girls you want, and another for the ones you... Oh, the doctor says it's pneumonia, but she's going to be all right. Oh, thank heaven. We'll send us flowers the first thing in the morning, Dallas. Wow, what a load off my mind. Oh, uh, look, let's all go back to the house and have some hot chocolate. Come on, Liz, you'll be able to think more clearly in the morning. I'm pretty clear right now, Mary. Will you please tell me, Liz, what is the matter? Something's been bothering me for a long time. I I never quite knew what it was. Well, now I know. I'm afraid, Mary, that I can't live up to cry you ideals. What did you say, dear? What, what are our ideals? Just being good friends and helping each other. Oh, and you're, you're all upset about poor Ruth, but we all are, dear. But we'll be the laughing stock of the campus. Why, a try you pledge hasn't turned in her pen since 1939, and she was kind of funny to begin with. Maybe she wasn't. Maybe she was a nice girl with the wrong kind of figure for clothes. I'm beginning to lose patience with you. Liz, dear, have you thought what this is going to do to your mother? You know how much you're being a try you mean to her. Just ask your mother. There are so many wonderful things about sorority. But the friendships you make, the real, true friendships, that's the most beautiful part. Well, I have a wonderful idea. Supposing we take Ruth back in. Oh, now, wait a minute. We went all through this Oh, well, let Ruth wear the pin. Who cares? Nobody ever has to know we be pledged there. Well, Liz, well, she'll be the happiest. No. No, it won't work. Mother Clark, a lot of things you've said are true. There are good things about sorority. But it's not enough to make up for the people they hurt. And I don't happen to like what's happened to me. I was so anxious to be a try you, I, I let Janet Shaw leave school. I found myself preferring people like Chad Carnes to Joe Blake. Well, who wouldn't? And I thought it was smart to cheat. I even thought it was important to be frosh queen. One thing you are right about, Dallas. Ruthie doesn't belong at the Try You House, where she'll be merely tolerated. You know very well what I meant. No. Ruthie belongs at Hyler Hall. She doesn't need to be tolerated, Mary. She needs to be wanted. I, I'm sorry, Mother Clark. What happened to your pledge pen? I guess this is just my night for losing jewelry. Did you quit or did they throw you out? I quit. And they'll say they threw you out. Well, that's a perfect arrangement. Everyone's face is saved. Now what? Well, I thought I'd double up with Adelaide for tonight. Good. I'll walk you over. In the morning, I'll see if I can find a room at Hyler Hall for Ruthie and me. Listen. The old main bell. Remember Janet Shaw? She got such a kick out of listening to it. Gosh, that, that seems a long time ago. It was a long time ago. How about dinner tomorrow night? Sure. Dutch, of course. <laughs> oh, Joe, wait. Now what's your problem? Oh, I, I was just thinking about my mother. We have to be so careful the way we break things to her. Well, Liz, our mothers have to grow up too, you know. Our stars will return. Most everyone knows that education is divided into two parts. Part one, we might say, consists of book study. And part two consists of putting the knowledge gained from books into operation. Part two in our schools and colleges is usually referred to as lab work. For example, a young student doctor reads and memorizes the workings of the human body, then moves on to become a hospital intern to put that knowledge into action. The botanist reads about a certain type leaf or plant formation, then lays down his textbook and turns to his microscope 
where he studies a specimen of this particular plant life. You know, in a certain sense, you men in the armed forces overseas are being studied under a microscope. And on the top side of that microscope are millions of people who have heard a lot or read a lot about Americans. Now, perhaps for the first time in their lives, they have an opportunity to do some lab work. So let them see a good specimen, a true specimen, a true picture of the United States. Remember, a country is known by its people. What people think about your country depends on you. Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. And here they are, coming forward for a curtain call. Gene Crane and Dale Robertson. <laughs> Dale, we know you're in a hurry to catch a plane, but won't you take a minute to tell us about the movie time USA tour you're making? Well, I'll be gone about two months, Bill. All around the country. Well, I hope you're going to mention your latest picture for 20th Century Fox, The Return of the Texan, while you're on tour. Be sure of it. I fly out tonight, and I'll cover New York City and surrounding territory, Boston and surrounding territory, Oklahoma City. And surrounding territory. Oh. New Orleans. And surrounding territory. And Texas. Ah, oh, at last. The Return of the Texan. Hmm. Well, maybe the Texans won't let you return to California. Well, I think they will. You see, I was born in Oklahoma. It's sort of a rivalry. <laughs> Which state has the most rugged men and beautiful women? And now I know you're anxious to be on your way. Now, uh -uh, wait a minute. I want to hear about next week's play. You've been keeping it a secret for weeks. And I'm afraid it's still a secret because this picture was selected by the moviegoers of America in a nationwide poll for Photoplay magazine to determine the winner of its famous gold medal award. I can only say... This is the play you've all been asking and waiting for. And I'll be listening from surrounding territories. <laughs> Good night. Good night, and hurry back. The Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Mr. William Keeley. Our orchestra is directed by Rudy Schrager. This is John Milton Kennedy inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.